Hi guys, welcome. How you doing? I'm good. Very excited for this video because I think it's going to be tremendously helpful whether you are a uh, cinematographer, a content creator, or uh, you just want your videos to look more like they've been shot in film. So the goal of this video is to make you understand what film does, what the components of a film system are, and uh, ultimately how we can apply this new knowledge to our color grading workflow to achieve a believable film look. This video is going to be brief but uh, packed with information. And uh, if you stick until the end, I got something for you. And uh, it's going to be great. And it's going to be free. You'll see. But, uh, but you got to stick until the end, okay? Promise me. Wait a second. Hello? Jimmy, you know this is a YouTube video, right? They can just skip to the end part and get it. Yeah, but they would miss on so much information and uh, they would probably not use it properly. Yeah, I know, but you gotta keep him engaged. Yeah, I'm explaining stuff. I think it's engaging. What if you make it a short, maybe? The algorithm would be happy. What you mean a short? Like, it took me months to figure this out. I can't make it a short. A short is too short. Well, I warned you. You know what? Like, screw you. Whatever. So a film system would work like this. You have a film camera that records what it sees on a film negative. The negative can be processed in different ways. The most basic would be to send it to a laboratory where it would be processed chemically and then printed on a positive that is then ready for projection. If a movie requires special effects or any digital manipulation, the film negative would be processed chemically, then scanned, imported on the computer, manipulated and then out to be printed on a film positive for projection. Film is a great medium because it looks amazing. And it looks amazing because the color scientists over at Kodak and Fuji spent literally decades perfecting tonal and color rendition of film to make it aesthetically pleasing. The first step towards getting the film look would be to analyze what the attributes of film are the digital lacks and find a way to shape our digital footage to match those attributes. So here's the list of the four most important attributes of film. The first one would be contrast. Film is contrasty. It has a strong S curve with a long toe and shoulder. To achieve a believable film look, you gotta embrace the contrast. Second, we have colors. As you know, film produces very dense and saturated colors and renders rich and beautiful skin tones. Third would be grain. Well, there's no explanation needed here. And uh, fourth would be halation. Not to be confused with glow, halation is a spatial attribute of uh, film that produces a red-orange halo near the contrasting boundaries of overexposed areas. So where the light meets darkness. There are other attributes like, for example, film blur, but I think those four are the main ones and the ones that are more worth the effort of matching in order to achieve a believable emulation. But today, we're gonna focus on the first two attributes, so colors and contrast. We're gonna leave grain and halation for another video. And uh, so let's jump in DaVinci Resolve to see how we can practically do it. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve and um, I think if you messed around with DaVinci Resolve uh, enough, you came across this LUT folder called Film Looks. Well, you don't know what you found yet, but trust me, you found a treasure. And um, you found a treasure because these film LUTs are, uh, these film looks are film print emulation LUTs. Well, remember when I told you before that film negative would go, would, would be scanned and brought to digital? Uh, for whatever type of manipulation. Well, these film print LUTs have been created by color scientists to give a preview of how the images would have looked after printing while still in a digital domain. These LUTs represent the most accurate way to mimic the printing process digitally, and they are free, which is nice. Just keep in mind that out of all these LUTs, the only ones that, um, that we're gonna use are the ones that say to Rec 709 because the other ones are for um, theatrical delivery, just a disclaimer. If we try to apply one of these LUTs, let's say let, let the, the Kodak 2383D60 to one of our uh, log images, we can see that it's definitely doing something, but uh, like the saturation is way off, like it killed all the saturation in the image. It, add, it added contrast for sure, it might be interesting for that, but uh, overall I don't like the, the look of this. And uh, the reason why 
uh, the LUT is not behaving properly, it's uh, because those film print LUTs are expecting scanned film negative images. And if you're feeding them log footage, they can't behave properly. The better we can match our log footage to scan film negative, the more accurate our film look is going to be. So there are two ways to do so. The first one I'm going to show you is the one that you probably know already and uh, it involves applying a color space transform to go from whatever log you have to senior log. So prior to the film print LUT. So we can do this by going to fax color space transform and uh, we apply it to the node prior to the film print LUT. And uh, we go from, in this case, Airy log C uh, to Rec 709 Senior log. So here you gotta select the flavor of log that you have. Like for example, for Sony, you go from S gamut dot S gamut three dot Senior whatever uh, S log three in the, um, if you use S log three to um, Rec 709 Senior log. This, this is the correct conversion. And you can see how this transformation before the uh, film print LUT brought back colors and saturation by getting closer to what the LUT actually expects. So we can, we can see before, after, before, and after. So here we have the log image that we started with. Then we can see the image with a standard Rec. 79 conversion. And then we have the same image going through the film print LUT without any transformation prior to it. And then the actual uh, color space transform before the LUT and we can see how the results are much better. So, okay, this is the first way to get closer to what the LUT expects, but the second and most accurate way to match the footage to scan film negative is to use a LUT that has been purposely created to match a scanned film negative, like the Kodak 50D LUT that I created and decided to give away to whoever clicks the link down below. So please do it and I'm, I'm gonna show you how to use it. The LUT has been created by matching Airy Log C to Kodak 50D Film Negative within the Fusion tab inside of Resolve. The process involves uh, matching color charts shot under the same conditions on both Airy camera and a film camera with a Kodak 50D negative. So here we can uh, see, so okay, we apply the LUT and uh, we can see it's more contrasty than the color space transform version and uh, it adds some hue shift, especially in the greens that are turned slightly more towards yellow, just like Kodak would do. And I really like that. And uh, overall, I think it delivers a very pleasing film tone and colors. And uh, this power grade that uh, you're gonna get with the download, if you decide to download it, it can be used with uh, any camera, but it expects uh, every log uh, as an uh, input. So. If you're using any other camera with its flavor of log, you'll just need to go to the first node, which uh, is disabled as default in the power grade, which contains a color space transform. You enable it and uh, select the correct input. The output is already set to Ari Alexa, Ari Loxy, and you're good to go. So with the color space transform or my power grade even better, you can finally use the film looks inside of DaVinci Resolve effectively and reliably. And um, if you wanna get your copy, click on the link in the description down below. It's completely free, it works amazing. I use it all the time. And uh, just because nobody's sponsoring this video, I'm gonna sponsor myself by saying that the Kodak 50D power grade is part of a product that I created called Filmmatch. Film match is the result of more than a year of research and it comes as a powerful yet flexible film emulation power grade that allows you to transform your digital footage to film, delivering amazing skin tones, film-like saturation and all the characteristics of film that we love like 35mm grain and halation. Filmmatch is super easy to use, but the transformations that happen under the hoods are very complex and they have been developed outside the color page of DaVinci Resolve, utilizing custom math and color science within Fusion. Here's a quick demonstration with the images we already worked with today, going from Rec. 09 to Filmmatch.
If you want to know more about Film Match, go check it out at film-match.com. And uh, if you like this video, please let me know by leaving a thumbs up, by commenting, subscribing. And uh, I guess I'll see you next time. <laughs>